The internet is full of data available for you to start a project. Obtaining that data could be as simple as copying and pasting it. But when it comes to large data, web scraping is the best solution. If you Google web scraping with Python, you'll get many tutorials using different Python libraries, such as Selenium, Playwright, Scrapy, and you'll even find alternatives like ChatGPT. There are many options, but the truth is that each of them suits different needs. That's why in this video, we learn their pros and cons and put them to the test. And as a bonus, in the end of this video, we'll also review ChatGPT for web scraping and whether it can replace Python. So let's get started. Okay, first we have Selenium, and Selenium wasn't originally designed for web scraping. In fact, Selenium is a web driver designed to render web pages for test automations of web applications. This makes Selenium good for web scraping because many websites rely on JavaScript to create dynamic content on the page. And Selenium is a friendly tool that is easy to learn. It allows code to mimic human behavior such as clicking on a button, selecting drop-down menus, maximizing windows, and more. Now let's see a web scraper I created with Python and Selenium and also do some tests. All right, now we can see the Python script I created to scrape Audible, which is a website like Amazon, but only for audiobooks. And as we can see, the script might look long, but is actually easy to understand. Selenium has functions that are very easy to understand. For example, get to get a website where you want to go, then maximize window to maximize the window, find element by to locate any element in the website, then wait, either an implicit wait where you specify how many seconds you want to wait, or an explicit wait where you wait until a condition is satisfied. And that's why Selenium is very popular. It's a web scraping framework that is very easy to learn. However, this comes with some drawbacks. For example, here, we don't have an elegant way to do pagination. And as you can see, you have to come up with some alternatives to do pagination. As you can see here, I did a while loop, but other frameworks, for example, Scrapey has a more native or elegant way to do pagination. Also, Selenium is not asynchronous, which makes this tool inefficient when scraping large amounts of data. And that's one of the reasons why Selenium is only convenient for small or medium projects. Now I'm gonna make a test so you can see how long it takes scraping a website with Selenium. So here I'm gonna open the terminal and I'm gonna run this script. Now as you can see, Selenium opens up a uh, uh, page and then it maximizes the window and then it's going through every page of this audible website. It has five pages, so it's going through every page it has. It's going to scroll down and then go to the next page and the next page, just like a normal person would do. That's what Selenium does. It imitates how a person navigates a website. Once Selenium scrapes all the pages, it's going to close the window it opened and then it's going to export the CSV file that it generated. Okay, now let's see Scrapey. Scrapey is a web scraping framework built specially for web scraping and written entirely in Python. One of the biggest advantages of Scrapey is speed. Scrapey is asynchronous. Scrapey's spiders don't have to wait to make requests one at a time, but they can make requests in parallel. This increases efficiency, which makes Scrapey memory and CPU efficient compared to Selenium, for example. Unfortunately, Scrapey doesn't handle JavaScript by default, and also learning Scrapey is usually more difficult than Selenium. All right, now let's see a script I created using Python and Scrapey and how long it takes to scrape a website. All right, now we can see the script I created to scrape the Audible website, which is the same website we scraped before with Selenium. And now as you can see, everything looks more organized. And this is because we use classes with Scrapey. We have to create a class, and then we have to define some functions, as you can see here, the start request function, and then we have to create uh, some parse functions. You can still use XPath to locate elements as you do with Selenium, but overall, learning Scrapey is difficult for beginners. But this also comes with some benefits. For example, doing pagination with Scrapey is as simple as using yield and then response that follow. Also, you don't need to combine this with other libraries like Pandas to export the data that you extracted because Scrapey is a complete web scraping solution. Some files that come when you create a Scrapey project are these four. If you modify these files, you can do things like exporting your data to an external database like MongoDB or changing that user agent so you avoid being banned by some websites and more. 
These extra features are actually what make Scrapey a complete web scraping solution and also makes Scrapey ideal for large projects. And the main drawback is that it's not so easy to learn and you will need to learn how to use Splash if you want to scrape a dynamic website. All right, now let's run this script to see how long it takes to scrape a website with a Scrapey. So here I'm in the terminal and again, I'm going to run this script. And unlike Selenium, Scrapey doesn't open a site and imitates a human behavior like clicking on a button, but it only locates the elements and extracts the data. And as we can see here, it took Scrapey only less than five seconds to scrape 100 items, which are the 100 audiobooks that we scraped. And it's here, as you can see here, we have books.csv and here are the 100 items that were scraped with Scrapey. And this is way much faster than Selenium because it's asynchronous. All right, now it's time to see Playwright. Playwright is an automation tool that can be used with Python. Like Selenium, Playwright simulates user behavior on sites, such as clicking on links or navigating through the web app by using buttons or menus. However, unlike Selenium, Playwright has first-class support for asynchronous programming, making it more efficient in handling concurrent operations and ideal for dealing with modern JavaScript heavy websites and projects that require speed, high performance and scalability. Playwright's full potential is unleashed with asynchronous programming, which adds a layer of complexity to the learning process. This makes Playwright more challenging to learn for beginners than other web scraping libraries, such as Selenium and Beautiful Soup. All right, so far we've seen different Python libraries for web scraping. They have different pros and cons, but on my experience, no matter what library you use, you'll come across the same challenges to scrape websites like blogs and captchas. If you'd like to overcome those challenges, I recommend you to use Bright Data, which is the sponsor of this video. Bright Data's scraping solutions are perfect to unlock the largest dataset in the history of mankind, the internet. One of my favorite scraping solutions of Bright Data is the scraping browser. This is ideal for multi-step scraping projects that require browser interactions along with automated proxies and unblocking. With Bright Data's scraping browser, you'll say goodbye to manual captcha solving, IP bans, and other web scraping challenges. The best part is that with just a single line of code, you can connect to your Puppeteer, Playwright, or Selenium scripts to the scraping browser, and it'll handle all proxy and unlocking operations behind the scenes. Start a free trial today and unlock the internet with Bright Data's scraping browser using the link in the description. Thanks to Bright Data for sponsoring this video, and now let's go back to the video. And now we have ChatGPT for web scraping. Yes, you can use ChatGPT to scrape a website, but at the moment I'm recording this video, it will only scrape non-dynamic websites. That said, the biggest advantage of ChatGPT is that you don't need to know coding to scrape a site, but only use a GPT or save the page as HTML or PDF, as I showed you in my previous tutorials. All these methods work with some websites, but not for all. Also, ChatGPT is not ideal for scraping hundreds of pages, as it might throw an error if the process takes a lot of time. This makes ChatGPT only good for small projects. And as you can see in the demo, I scraped the Audible website with ChatGPT in a few seconds. I only needed to give the link and it extracted all the data as I did with Selenium and Scrapy, but I didn't have to write any code. And that's it for this video. Let me know in the comment section what's your favorite web scraping library, and I'll see you on the next video.